I just released a dedicated coup video because there are so many animals in this game and they are all so unique. This is my barn video and I definitely have some controversial opinions on some of the barn animals. But before we talk about the animals, here are some quick tips and tricks about animals in general that didn't make it into the coop video. Naturally, your animals will need to be fed. And in winter, grass does not grow, so you won't be able to harvest your own hay. There are two things that you can do to make your grass go further, and these can save you some money in winter. First, you should harvest as much grass as you can until your silo is full. Then go to one of your animal buildings and take a bunch of hay out of the hay dispenser and place it in a chest. Now you can harvest a bunch of hay again and it will go to your silo instead of being wasted. This will allow you to stockpile more hay than you usually would be able to. You can also allow your animals to eat grass outside of their buildings instead of eating hay in their feeding bins. There is a trick to stop your animals from eating all of the wild grass on your farm and that is by placing something on a piece of grass. That specific piece of grass cannot be eaten by your animals and grass spreads from other grass. By doing this, you are effectively forcing more grass to grow on your farm and preventing it from all being eaten up. You can place all kinds of items items on your grass like fences and lightning rods. If you have plenty of animals, I would recommend using both of these tips in conjunction to make your winter easier to handle. You probably already knew this, but just in case you didn't, you can paint your barns and coops by visiting Robin's Carpentry store. You can unfortunately only paint the deluxe version of these buildings, but you will probably be upgrading them to their deluxe versions Anyway, there is a ton of freedom with this painting tool as they are color and shade sliders So you are only limited by your own imagination Now onto the barn animals I am sure you have seen a bunch of videos about how profitable pigs are and you might be thinking that you should only buy pigs and then swim in the gold right? Well, don't underestimate the humble cow. The cow is the first barn animal that you can buy and it only costs 1,500 gold. This means that you can get quite a few cows really early into the game. Sure, you probably only need a single one of them for the community center, but I always get at least six cows because they produce milk. Milk is used in quite a few cooking recipes, but that is not what I'm interested in. I'm more interested in turning milk into cheese. Cheese is definitely one of the best early game healing foods that you can make. Once you get a few cows, you will be producing tons of milk and thus tons of cheese. Cows will produce milk every single day and that is why I prefer cows over goats. If you pet and milk your cows often, they will eventually start to produce larger portions of milk. And the more milk means the higher quality cheese. Gold quality cheese will heal you for over 100 health. And in the early game, you really don't have that much health. Milking cows can get a little bit tedious. But once you get an auto grabber, you will quickly get a huge stockpile of milk. This might seem strange, but if you wanted to, you could also age your cheese by placing them into casks, but I think I will continue to use my casks for star fruit wine. If you aren't into cows, you can always get a goat. Goats function in the exact same way as cows. Instead, they produce goat milk. Of course, you can also turn their milk into cheese. It is just, you know, goat cheese. Now this is why I prefer cows over goats. Goats will only produce milk every second day, meaning they will produce half as much milk as cows. And goat cheese sells for almost two times more than regular cheese, but it heals for the exact same amount, which I think is very odd. I don't really rely on cheese as a money maker, as I see it more of a healing item. So goat's cheese just does not seem as good. You will be producing less and the yield for the same amount. Alright, now onto sheep. In my coop guide, I stated that I prefer rabbits over sheep. And unfortunately, that has not changed. If your sheep are happy, they will produce one piece of wool every three days. Naturally, you will have to manually shear them unless you have an order grabber. If you do have the shepherd profession that you can get at level 10 farming, your sheep will produce wool every two days instead. And that's it. This is why I seem to prefer rabbits. Rabbits produce wool and have a chance of 
stop reducing a rabbit's foot where sheep are just kind of there. Wool also does not have that many uses. You can use a loom to turn your wool into cloth. And with cloth, you can craft all kinds of clothing using a sewing machine. On my main playthrough, I managed to get enough cloth from defeating mummies in the skull cavern. So yeah, sheep are cute, but there are definitely better animals to utilize. Now on to the gold makers, the prophet beasts, the extremely sought after lucrative pig. You know, when I first started playing Stardew Valley a long time ago, I had no idea why I would buy a pig in this game. Because what value would they even bring? Well, pigs have a special power. They just magically make truffles appear out of nowhere. Here in the real world, truffles are one of the most expensive food items. And that is because they're actually extremely rare. But in Stardew Valley, all you need to do is buy like 12 pigs and you'll basically have an infinite supply of truffles and these things sell for quite a bit. However, there is a trick that you can do to make your truffles worth even more. When you reach level 5 foraging, you can pick the gatherer profession. This profession will give you a 20% chance to harvest two forageables instead of one. For some reason, truffles count as forageables, so each time you harvest some truffles, there is a chance to find two instead of one. 20% is a good percentage and you will very quickly stockpile truffles with this profession. But wait, there is more. When you reach level 10 foraging, you can pick the botanist profession. This profession will cause all of your forageables to always be iridium quality when you harvest them. And truffles count as forageables. Imagine a world where you will only harvest iridium quality truffles. Plus, you have a chance to get double. Yeah, pigs are just the best money making animal by a landslide. With the addition of the latest 1.5 update, we now have a new animal for the board, the ostrich. Getting your first ostrich is quite difficult since you can't just buy them from Marnie's ranch. You will have to do a bunch of stuff on Ginger Island in order to craft an ostrich egg incubator. And finding an ostrich egg is also quite difficult. However, the ostrich makes the cutest sounds in the game and that is already a good enough reason for me to get a couple of ostriches. Ostriches will produce an ostrich egg every 7 days. You can just sell these eggs as they are because they are worth quite a bit. But you can turn these large eggs into mayonnaise as well. Since ostrich eggs are so large and valuable, they will produce 10 mayonnaise instead of 1. It is always more profitable to turn your ostrich eggs into mayonnaise because 10 servings of mayonnaise will sell for quite a bit. And that brings us to the end of this video. When you take a deeper look at each of the animals in Stardew Valley, you really start to realize that there are actually quite a few of them and they all mostly serve their own unique purposes. If you did like this video, please do consider hitting that subscribe button and hey, if you got this far into the video, you must have liked it, so leave a like too. But for now, I will see you in the next video.